Okay, welcome everyone to a taste of the training that will take place on September 19th and 20th called Coping with Infertility. And my experience has taught me that uh, people who are struggling with infertility really need their therapist to be tuned in in a very special way. And um, it does promise to be a very rich experience. I come to this field since 1979 and uh, my training in mind-body therapy and my training in clinical hypnotherapy has really been a boon, almost like it was tailor-made for infertility patients. And it's very exciting for me to be able to teach my colleagues the things that give so much relief to the men, women, and couples who are struggling with this scourge, I guess you might say. And uh, basically what I want to do in this brief uh, intro is to use the, this time uh, as if it were hors d'oeuvres uh, so that you can get the essence of the training. And I underline essence because really it's, it's somewhat have to do, has to do with what I can teach you in a cognitive way. But what I really want to impart to you tonight is that the most profound aspect of this training is what you learn from the inside out. That's what I mean by the essence, for you to be able to experience some of these techniques so that you really know uh, what it is that can make a difference and you're motivated to sign up for my training. Uh, and by the way, uh, Infertility is an enormous adversity, but everyone is infertile in some way. And the techniques that will be taught on September 19th and 20th here in New York City apply pretty much to any adversity that a patient would bring into your office. So that's the, the bonus uh, in this. Um, I just want to start by, by saying that uh, Herbert Benson, where I took my training at Harvard, Dr. Herbert Benson, uh, talks about the three-legged stool, how medicine can provide uh, surgery and pharmaceuticals, but that the third leg of the uh, health care um, stool is really self-care. And so many of these things that uh, you will learn how to teach to your clients are things that they have to have a kind of a shift in mentality to be able to uh, know that they have to set aside the time to basically provide for themselves what medicine can't. Medicine cannot get into that mind-body connection and create the kind of shift that the person themselves can. And uh, I also want to uh, share with you um, uh, Dr. Uh, Daniel Siegel's definition of mindfulness. Uh, he talks about mindfulness as being the best friend you can to yourself. And that dovetails perfectly with what uh, Dr. Benson uh, was talking about when he talked about the limits of medical intervention. So basically what I'm saying is that the topics that we're going to cover tonight are about being, not knowing how to do something so much, but, but doing it, being it. And uh, the topics have to do with reversing stress, releasing stress. It has to do with m what I call my three A's, accepting what's going on, building awareness about what's going on, and then adapting with uh, coping mechanisms, some of which are uh, problem solving, a more cognitive approach, and others, the ones that I want to emphasize tonight, are the letting go uh, coping mechanisms. Uh, there's a underpinning to this training that has to do with brain science 
and that's going to be a big part of the training. And attendees will be free to bring cases in, and certainly there'll be plenty of time for asking questions because the audience, I already know there are, there's a midwife coming, there is a social worker coming, there's a nurse coming, so that basically the, uh, the orientation of the different members is going to also enrich the experience. Okay, now um, uh, this is my book on fertile ground healing and fertility, and um, I'm basically kind of orienting you toward the book. It would be recommended reading prior to coming because it is a map of the experience of infertility and the antidotes to stress. But the map is not the territory. And you have to know that on September 19th and 20th, we will go deeply into, this, into the territory. And prior to coming to the workshop, not only reading this book, but uh, if you go onto my website, which is www.mind-body-unity.com, you'll see that there's a resources tab. And if you click on it, there are about two dozen articles that will really broaden your perspective on what infertility patients go through. And then the last tab, there's a baby manifesto tab. That is my blog. And there's an enormous amount of uh, information there as well. Now, um, this is just a way of getting the webinar started. Uh, I don't know that you need me to read this to you. Uh, it's just about how profound the experience of infertility is for patients, how much they need to feel understood, and how much they themselves need to understand. They need to understand the normalcy of depression and anxiety, for instance. They need to understand the, the impact uh, the individual, the couple, the family and friends, uh, and that they're not crazy, that this is uh, just something that everyone goes through. But they also need to know what you know. They need to know that you know how to relieve their stress, how, that you understand it's a mind, body, spirit problem, that you can help them find perspective, and that uh, they can grow from this experience. Uh, what I'd like to do now is read a uh, list to you that dates back to a time when I did uh, an all-day experience for infertility patients. And uh, at lunch, I asked them to share with me what they wanted their therapists to know about the infertility experience. And this is what they said. This is just a selection of some of the things that they said. This is not just a mental depression. Chemicals, by which they mean the um, super ovulatory drugs, chemicals do things to you that you can't even imagine. Another person said, I want therapists to know how all-consuming the struggle is and how high the level of anxiety and depression can be. When I began with my current therapist, I was pretty depressed and I was unable to even make decisions about what time I could make an appointment with her. Even that seemed completely overwhelming. A third person said, I was devastated after my miscarriage. Now wait till you hear this one. My therapist pulled some Freudian shit on me, not wanting to know what in my childhood made me take this so hard. So be warned. Another person said, my therapist had knowledge of infertility and I felt that she was looking at me through that filter and I wasn't understood as an individual. She wasn't asking, what have you gone through? How are you doing? I like this one now too. The person said, the therapist that I fired claimed to be an expert but was not. She was interested in the details, not in me as a person. And another one commented about the fact that this was a group experience and she said, the group changed my mindset from I am helpless to there are many things under my control. 
And the last one that I want to share with you, I had a therapist once who said she knew about infertility, but I could tell that she had looked up a few things on the Internet and was pretending that she knew what I needed her to know. Tell your colleagues not to fake it. So, um, you know, we have so much training and we have so many wonderful skills. And I wanted to share this with you simply because I want to underline uh, that this is a special population. Okay, now, obviously, this is a campfire. Uh, and it's, um, it's a kind of uh, way of my saying uh, that what we need to do is go back to the future, so to speak. Uh, I want to tell you a story uh, about a uh, time that I was presenting at a conference in South Africa. And uh, after the conference, um, we visited a children's village. And one of the uh, elders took us around, and the kids were excited to see us, and they taught us songs, and we taught them English songs. And, and then as we were leaving, and this is the important thing, the elders said to us, you will be the talk of the campfire tonight. Now, this was 2000 and nine or 2010 and the campfire still utilized for its value for reversing the physiology of stress that when people sit around and tell stories or sing dance or drum the physiology of stress reverses itself and so what i would like you to invite you to do is since what I want to emphasize is the experiential component of these mind-body stress reduction techniques, think about a scale 0 to 10. 0 represents right now you are not even the slightest bit stressed, and 10 representing you're about to jump out of your skin. And just take a moment, perhaps close your eyes, do a little body scan, so that you can place where you are in terms of level of stress on that scale. And then we'll come back to that later on. Just remember the number. Now, the breath is the link between the mind and the body. And uh, you don't have to be a mind-body therapist to know that there are so many breathing exercises uh, that people utilize uh, because the exhale in particular tames down the parasympathetic nervous system. Right? I also would like to uh, tell you about the spirit part of mind, body, spirit. Uh, I heard a lecture once by David Abram, who wrote a wonderful book called The Spell of the Sensuous. And he writes magnificently. He speaks magnificently raised exponentially. And he talked about the Hebrew word for God, which is Yahweh. And he emphasized in the way that he said Yahweh the fact that it was as if spirit comes through you even as you say God's name. Now we're going to get a little bit more into spirit in a little while, but I would just like to shift this now to the experiential component and uh, to to invite you to experience the breath, but in a way that you may not have ever experienced it before. That being uh, to take a breath, but from a standing position, 
with your hands on your knees so that you're bent over. And what this does is it expands your rib cage, your back ribs. And now, if you take an exaggerated breath, a very long, slow, deep breath from this position, inhale, and release. And then sit down and make yourself comfortable again. But to please try this again later on so that you can restudy what the breath feels like when it is in its full glory, where you're really giving your lungs a chance to expand in a way that's different positionally and therefore will be, I believe, more obvious what the breath is all about. Uh, one of the reasons that I emphasize breathing, aside from the fact that it's very functional as an anxiety reducer, is I like to keep infertility patients in the mindset of their own life force even as they're attempting to create new life. That it is the breath, the Yahweh breath, the expansion of the lungs experience. It is their life, their vitality. And that's what they're looking to expand now to the next generation. Now, a very big issue with fertility patients are something that we all experience, but infertility uh, patients have a corner on the market of automatic negative thoughts. And how easily people can take experience at all and turn it into a negative. And certainly there's so much in the way of disappointment and the frustration of, a point, of daily appointments, of calls to the clinic, of waiting, of, of the months going by before you can do this or that. And it, 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 it's understandable that there would be an enormous amount of negativity. But automatic negative thoughts impact the body and the mind, and they take us out of the present moment. Breathing freely and easily in the present moment is as good as it might get at various times. And it's plenty good. Right? And what I mean to impart to my patients is that suffering can coexist with serenity. And that when there in that negative mindset, they're not being mindful, they're not being aware, they're not being friends with themselves. And to keep my promise of having this be an experiential uh, webinar, I'd like to invite you to think of an automatic negative thought that might have occurred to you today. Perhaps it's one that repeats itself. Perhaps it's something that happened, if not today, then last week or even last year, uh, that might impact your mind, intrude into your mind uh, uninvited. And what I'd like you to do is hold that automatic negative thought, whatever it is, even if it's something relatively minor. I always get on the wrong line in the supermarket. You don't need anything particularly dramatic in order to understand that how important it is to work with automatic negative thoughts and how possible it is to turn automatic negative thoughts into affirmations. And so holding your automatic negative thought now, I'd like you to close your eyes, hold that thought, 
say it over to yourself a few times. And now shift your orientation so that you can feel where in your body you experience that automatic negative thought. Where in your body you experience that automatic negative thought. And there is no wrong answer here. You feel it wherever you feel it. And you might want to jot that down. And now, I'd like you to close your eyes again. Hold that automatic negative thought once more. And determine how you experience that automatic negative thought in your mind. And I'm just going to throw a few words out to kind of jog your awareness. Holding that automatic negative thought, does it make you angry? Does it make you depressed? Are you feeling confused? Perhaps you feel helpless, maybe indifferent, fearful, hurt, sad. When you've located, if not that word or those words, then some variation on those words. Locate the word that best describes how you experience the automatic negative thought in your mind. And it could be more than one word. All right, now this is how I begin an exercise that you will learn. And then I go through a whole process where I teach my patients how to create an affirmation from the automatic negative thought. And then I do the same thing. Where do you feel that in your mind? Where do you feel that in your body? And it is such an eye-opening relief for people to understand that their automatic negative thoughts are impacting them in ways that can be controlled. Can be controlled. Can be worked with. Can be... Um, adjusted so that they can get relief from the automaticity of that negative that negativity. Now <clears throat> this is nothing more than what you see on the screen. It's a tree in the middle of a meadow. And we could use any image from nature. One of the things that I make a fuss over is how powerful images from nature really are and how qualified they are as antidotes for distracting from negativity. And just the same way that a person has to be willing to discipline themselves, to utilize the mind-body intervention for relief. So too here, a person who's struggling with negativity has to be aware enough, practiced enough to say, aha, I can pick an image from nature and I can utilize it to distract myself from whatever negative thought I'm having at the moment. So I'll give you a brief experience with how this works. So as you look at this tree, it's a black and white picture, but using the power of your creative imagination, turn it into a colored photograph and let the photograph come alive, and you get to decide what season it is. Is that new growth, apple green? Perhaps it is the middle of summer, and it's that lush lollipop green. 
or perhaps it's autumn. And you can stop and marvel at nature's beauty. This golden, rust, burgundy, yellow, green, bouffant. And take a lovely inhalation and just let yourself begin to appreciate something as simple as a tree as you now imagine yourself walking toward that tree in your own way, at your own pace, closer and closer, aware of the details becoming clearer and clearer as you approach the tree. And suddenly, you begin to notice veins coming toward you, the surface of those roots that you know have to go so deep into the earth in order to support a tree of that size. And that those roots are taking from the earth the sustenance, the water, the chemicals within the water, the nutrients from the soil, even as you get closer and closer, imagining the way nature has arranged to feed this tree from the bottom up. And now, as you approach, you can study the bark of the tree. You can allow your fingers to experience in a very sensual way. What does the bark of that tree feel like? Does it provoke any memories of childhood, perhaps climbing the tree? And you can look up and see the way that the sunlight can come through in its dappled way, creating brightness and shadows within inches of each other. And then perhaps you would enjoy sitting down and leaning against the tree, noticing a leaf and the way that you can pick up that leaf and touch it and smell it and notice the veins going to the very tip, the veins that nourish the leaf from the ground to the root, to the trunk, to the branches. And then using the power of your creative imagination when you are with your patients. There are so many more things that you can do with just one tree. But then again, any image from nature, be it a garden, be it a waterfall, a babbling brook, a sea slope, the beach, a hiking trail. People have their favorites. And you would be pleasantly surprised to discover what relief people get when you remind them of what's basically in front of us, there for the taking. Now this is a, a far side cartoon. And I like it because in the first frame, the man is saying, okay, Ginger, I've had it. You stay out of that garbage. Understand, Ginger, stay out of that garbage or else. But what Ginger hears is blah, 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 Ginger. Blah, 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 Ginger. Blah, blah, blah. Now, why would I put a slide like this in here? Well, if you've ever gone to a, an Alfred Hitchcock um, movie or uh, watched anything on television, uh, there's no question that you know 
when someone's life is in danger because the music is the giveaway. And what I'm intending to teach is that we have an obligation to speak a language that people hear. You want people to hear the whole sentence. You don't want them to hear blah, 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 ginger. Right? Well, my training, my hypnosis training, has tuned me into the impact of language on the part of the brain that experiences language and its capacity to alter mood. But I want to give you an experience now of another way to speak to that part of the brain. That part of the brain that controls how we feel. So it's not only words. It's music as well. And certainly this music is inspirational, inviting people to just take a breath and settle down. Ah, just let it all go. And if you bear with me, I want to play another piece just to give you another idea of how powerful music is as a language. Now, this is very different, very different from the first piece. When I've used this kind of music with people, even if they're depressed, they begin to dance. Because I've spoken to them in a language that you will learn about brain science and the way to reach people. Um, with words spoken in a certain way, not only the tone, but the phraseology, and uh, the music is a very powerful um, communicator. So you can use imagery from nature as a way of speaking to the right, the correct part of the brain that you want to reach to give people relief. Uh, and certainly uh, language and music is also uh, critically important. And uh, there is going to be an emphasis on brain science because to understand the brain is to understand the power we have to turn the tables on an unwanted change such as infertility. And I did promise to get back to the issue of spirituality Spirituality is not religion. Spirituality is about, kind of takes us back to the, the Yahweh breath, to see uh, the, the marvel, the wonder that we have life. And certainly when families are trying to increase their size by bringing in a baby and the whole miracle of it all, uh, spirituality cannot be separated from mind-body. 
And it doesn't really matter where people stand. Uh, when I was interviewing former patients for my book, I asked questions about higher power. And one of my, um, one of my patients, former patients said, oh, I don't believe in higher power. No, 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 that's not for me. And then she called me back and she said, on second thought, there is a higher power. It's Dr. Griffo's brain. Now, Dr. Griffo is the uh, chairman of the um, Mind Body Clinic at NYU Fertility Center. And so she was crediting his awareness, his knowledge, his skill with uh, IVF and, and, and her medical treatment as a higher power. Well, that's great. I don't have a problem with how people define it. Uh, but um, uh, you will learn a way to present spirituality with a kind of neutrality. So we're not ramming anything down anybody's throat. We're inviting people to look inside because they're looking inside anyway, and chances are they're probably thinking of themselves as Job. Um, the medical world doesn't go into this realm, but whenever I've asked people where they stand spiritually, I notice an enormous relief just for having been asked the question. And um, this is my last slide. And basically what I'm saying here is that there is a place to manage adversity cognitively. But with infertility, the heart is the heart of the matter. And patients really need us to see them and to be with them as total human beings. The way that they're suffering, the way that they can reunite their mind, body, spirit. Because one of the things that happens uh, when the level of stress goes to the level that it does with infertility is that the body walks the earth and the mind takes off the, the solar system. All right, so we want to help people to re-inhabit their body. And now, I would just like you to follow my words for a moment. <sighs> just take a nice breath yourself settle down, perhaps another breath, just to get yourself into your focusing now on the rhythm of your breathing, just for another few breaths. And from this place, I invite you to go back to that scale, zero, no stress whatsoever, 10, jumping out of your skin. Where are you now compared to where you were when we began? And I invite you to notice on the screen my telephone number. I'd be more than happy to discuss any questions that you have in person about signing up for this two-day training. If you copy down the uh, bit.ly uh, code, uh, or if you just go to my website, www.mind-body-unity.com. There's a, um, a, uh, an opportunity to click on the link that will give you more information about this training. I'm very excited about it. I hope that you will join me 
Again, it's September 19th and 20th in New York City. And thank you for attending. <laughs>